Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's do better than that. Stand on your feet. Let's give him a praise. How many know he's worthy to be praised? Shout hallelujah. Everybody on your feet that can. Stand on your feet and tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You've done some wonderful things in my life. And that you've done wonderful things in the life of each and every one of us because we're here today. Clap your hands today and tell him thank you. Clap your hands and say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glad to see Miss Alice back in the house. Y'all give her a hand right now. She went through surgery. Jara and I, we went to visit her at the hospital. And she's here today. We give God praise. Had a very serious surgery, but we're thankful. We're grateful. Didn't even think she would be able to make it today because of the severity of the service, but of the surgery. But she's here today. Somebody ought to say thank you. Somebody ought to say thank you. If you're alive and well, you ought to give him a praise right now. Wave your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Come on, praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name for life, health, and strength. Anybody happy that God has given you health today? Anybody happy that God has given you strength and the ability to walk, the ability to talk, the ability to use your limbs? We give him praise. Hallelujah. Anybody going to wait on Jesus? Sometimes we go ahead of God. Anybody went ahead of God? Come on. Raise your hand. If you've been going ahead of God sometimes, give him praise. We got to wait on Jesus. Because when we wait on Jesus, everything goes smoothly. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. I'm gonna wait on you. I've tasted your goodness. I've trusted your promise. I'm gonna wait on you. Hallelujah. I'm gonna wait on you. I've tasted your goodness. I've trusted your promise. Help me sing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait on you. I'm going to wait on you. I've tasted your goodness. I've tasted your goodness. Trusted your promise. I'm going to wait on you. Hallelujah. I'm going to wait on you. I've tasted your goodness. I've tasted your goodness. Trusted your promise. I'm going to wait on you. Hallelujah. Somebody say, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. He will renew your strength. So wait, I sell the Lord. We give you glory. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Lord. He will renew your strength. So wait. what happens when you wait on Jesus. Sing it again. That's what happens. That's what happens when you wait. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Anybody on this side going to wait on him? That's what happens. That's what happens when you wait. We give you glory. We give you praise and honor. That's what happens when you wait. That's what when you wait. Hallelujah. They that wait on the Lord, they that, they that Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, 
That's what happens. That's what happens when you wait. Bless your name. Bless your name, oh Jesus. That's what happens. Happens when you wait. Glorify your name. One more time, everybody say, that's what happens when you wait. What happens when you wait? Hallelujah. Wait on the Lord. Shout it out. Come on, sing. Wait on the Lord. God been good to anybody other than me? Has he been good to anybody other than me? We serve an amazing God. We serve an amazing God. Is there one testimony of the goodness of Jesus Christ? One testimony of the goodness of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I give you praise. Hallelujah. Is that one testimony? Praise the Lord, church. I just want to praise God this day for his goodness and his kindness. You know, God's just been so good. He's blessed me above and beyond I can even imagine or believe. Sometimes I just wake up in the morning and I say, God, your blessing's just so great. God, I thank you for your blessings. God has put clothes on my back, shoes on my feet, and a roof over my head. He's blessed me in my finances. I tell you, God has put some money in my bank account. Sometimes I just don't know where it's coming from. And I just give God praise for it. I thank him for, you know, when I get on the road, get behind that wheel, it's a challenge because it seems like, seem like everybody's in a hurry all the time and they're always running by me, you know, and it gets to be kind of dangerous on that road. So sometimes I just thank God for safety. God blessed me with a bicycle, y'all. <laughs> And you're talking about a challenge. Wow, it seems like nobody can see me on that bicycle. So God has just blessed me. It's a, I can't help but just thank God for safety on that bicycle. Because it seems like wow, people just don't see me sometimes. I have lights flashing on. I even put a flag on top of it. And people still don't see me. So I just praise God for the safety that he's provided for me, even behind that bicycle wheel. Praise the Lord. Give him a praise. Hallelujah. Oh, man, I'm so glad. Oh, hallelujah to see Miss Alice in church. Somebody ought to be a shout right now. I mean, y'all need to be shouting. Come over here. Come in front of me right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to give God all the honor and the glory. He brought me through the surgery. And the doctor is telling me I may not have to do chemo. He said he thinks he got it all. But we're going to, I haven't been to see the oncologist yet, so I'm still, you know, praising God that I won't have to, that he'll give me a speedy recovery. I just was determined I was going to get up in here this morning. It took me a little longer to get ready. And that's, my sister had to come and get me, so I'm sorry for being late. But I just wanted to be here this morning to give God all the praise and glory and the honor yeah. because it could have went another way so i just want to thank god hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah when i think about jesus and all the things that he's done for me my soul cries out hallelujah i say when i think about jesus and all the things that he's done for me my soul cries out hallelujah hallelujah I gotta pray. Come on, y'all. 
Hallelujah. I gotta pray. I just want to give God praise for bringing us through last week. We had a few challenges business-wise, not health-wise, business-wise. But God answered our prayer because we consulted with God and prayed over. And before we knew it, he had gave us the answer. And so I just prayed for praying us, not last week, but helpful all of Virginia's time. God is good, y'all. He's awesome. He's Great to be praised. Come on, somebody. Whoa. I gotta praise. I gotta praise. Come on, God Father. I see you coming. Hallelujah. I gotta praise. I gotta praise. I gotta praise. I gotta praise. Shout it out. One more time. Sing it. Say it. I gotta praise. amazing God. This is the house of worship, y'all. I need for you to open your mouths and begin to praise him right now. Come on, open your mouths. I need to hear you praising him with your mouth. Hallelujah. Anybody need something from God right now? Anybody need something from God? Right now, you need something from God. Shout it out. Tell God, I need you right now. The thing that we need the most from God is him. 
We need him more than we need stuff. So when we come into this house, we come in to give him praise. I'm so grateful to be in the house of God one more time. Anybody ready for the word? Anybody ready for the word? Anybody reading your Bibles? I need all, all my Bible readers to raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. All my Bible readers, amen. Let me give you a word. Every single day that you can. No, I'll say it this way. Every day that you eat food, you need to read your word. Don't only feed your physical body and your spiritual body go without the nutrition that it needs. Are you listening to what I'm saying? What I'm finding to be true, when I go through things, I don't have to get on the phone and call everybody and say, you know what, I'm, I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing with that, I'm dealing with that. And there's nothing wrong with calling qualified people. Somebody say qualified. Say qualified. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Don't just be calling everybody. And the reason being, I got a lot of scriptures that I already know from when I was a little child, like my baby Pinky right there. When I was a little child, are you listening? When I was a little child, I was studying the Bible. Study, I could give a full Bible study in the sixth grade. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Because I studied. A lot of the things when I studied the Bible then, I didn't really understand what it meant at the time, but I had the information. Somebody said he had the information. And as I grew older and the real situations came my way. How many of you know that when you get older, you're going to come into some real, anybody in the building had some real situations? Come on, raise your hand if you had some real situations. Well, see, that's not the time to learn the scriptures when you're going through. You got to learn them when the storm, before the storm comes. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And I'm giving you this information, I tell you, this stuff because I'm telling you there's a storm coming into the United States and not only the United States is coming to the world a financial storm is coming I'm telling you trust me when I tell you I had a person to call me the person went to the hospital they went to the hospital this person was not even a, was not even able to be admitted because the rooms were full. Did you hear what I said? Person had to go to the hospital and they didn't even have room. They called, had another situation where they called the ambulance. And the ambulance said, well, call us back if it gets worse. Am I telling the truth? Call them back if it gets worse. They didn't even come because the hospitals were full of sick folk. Y'all listen to what I'm telling you. It's getting worse, y'all. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Not giving you bad news because if you're with Jesus, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I say if you're with Jesus, you have nothing to worry about. But I want you to be cognizant of what's happening. And I want you to be equipped. Somebody say equipped. Equipped with the word of God. Because the word of God will sustain you when everything else fails. Am I talking okay, sister? When everything else fails, when your marriage fails, when your finances fail, the Word of God will stand forever. That's a promise. So I don't just say, read your Bible, read your Bible, just because it's, it, it's, it's, it becomes cliche-ish all the time. You need to read your Bible, you need to read your Bible. You know you need to read your Bible. It's too critical to play with it now. See, before we could just say it, and you know, hopefully nothing goes wrong, things are already going wrong. So you need to dig into the Bible and get some answers. Anybody need answers to some situations? Raise your hands if you need some answers. Well, I'm telling you that the answer is in the Word of God. Give the Lord a praise. Before the message comes, we'll have another song. By Sonia Chambers. Amen.
Give him a praise. Somebody say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Hallelujah. How many of you know that we serve an amazing God? Come on, lift your hands and tell me thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, I worship. Thank you, Sanaya, for that beautiful song. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Has he provided for anybody in the building? Come on now. Has he provided for anybody in the building? Jehovah Jireh, you are my provider. Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory. Hallelujah. I give God praise for who he is, for his love, for his mercy, and for his kindness. Let's do our affirmations as we stand. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and never beneath. I'm a lender. Say it again. Say, I'm a lender. Do you have some money in your pocket? Say, I'm a lender and not a borrower. Hallelujah. My family is blessed. My health is blessed. My finances are blessed. My relationship is blessed. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I rest in the peace of God. I have the victory in Christ Jesus. Now give him a thunderous praise as you see. As you see that, give him praise. Come on now. Hallelujah. Can I get the energy in the room? Can I get some energy in the room? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We serve an amazing God, and I'm so grateful to be his son. Anybody ready for the word? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. Our scripture comes from Matthew. Somebody say Matthew. Chapter 3, verses 13 through 17 in the ER version. Matthew 3, 13 through 17 in the ER version. Y'all ready? The Bible says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River. He came to John, wanting John to baptize him. Y'all reading with me? But John tried to stop him. John said, why do you come to me to be baptized? I should be baptized by you. Jesus answered, let it be this way for now. We should do whatever God says is right. Then John agreed. So Jesus was baptized. As soon as he came up out of the water, the sky opened, y'all see it? And he saw God's spirit coming down on him like a dove, amen. A voice from heaven said, this is my son, the one I love. I am very pleased with him. I like the way the King James Version says this, this is my beloved son, y'all remember that one? In whom I am well please. Y'all give the Lord a hand. Give the musicians a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go on to chapter 4. In the King James Version, it says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Y'all see the transition of what happened? He's just been baptized. Now he's been tempted. He's been tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted, 40 days and 40 nights. He was afterwards and hungry. I want to talk from the subject, distractions. Somebody say distractions. Anybody been distracted? Were you distracted on your way to church today? Did somebody pull in front of you? Distractions. Anybody have distractions in your life? You're trying to do one thing and then something comes along and distracts you. Many of our failures are not a result of a lack of skills, resources, or talent, but a result of distractions. Y'all gonna preach this with me? Many of our children fail in school, not because they're slow, amen, but because they are distracted. Many people can't go to the next level in their occupation. Anybody trying to go to the next level in your occupation? It's not because you don't have the skills or the talent. It's because of distractions. 
Many people find it difficult to lose weight. Anybody been trying to lose some weight? Come on, y'all be honest with me. Amen. And reach your health goals, but you can't do it because of distractions. There are so many areas in life where we become distracted. Have you ever searched the web? And you were looking for a word on the web. And you found yourself searching. You were still on the web like three or four hours later after you found the definition of the word. You understand what I'm talking about? And why were you on the web so long? Distractions. Amen. Have you had a deadline at work on a project? This is my wife. I know she's been through stuff like that. But you can't get anything done because your coworkers are constantly distracting you. Anybody can testify to what I'm talking about. One of the greatest tools the enemy uses to take our attention off God is distractions. You need to keep your eyes on God at all times. But the enemy knows that when you're connected with God, you have power. Somebody say power. Power. So he tries to distract you. You can be fully devoted to reading the Bible, praying, fasting, and coming to church. But the enemy will slip in a distraction to completely throw you off kilter. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I remember when I was in college. I was completely devoted to studying the Bible, reading the Word, and spending time with God. And the college students in here, let me see your hands. Amen. Give him praise. When I was in college, man, I was spending three and four hours at a time studying my Bible. But I messed up and got a girlfriend. Can I talk to you for a minute? I messed around and got a girlfriend. I mean, three and four hours studying my word. Hadn't had a girlfriend before. I messed around and got a girlfriend, and my devotion time went straight out the window. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? Don't leave me up here by myself. Back then, we didn't have cell phones. We had pages. Y'all remember that? So while in devotion, my pager would go off. Before I would cut it off, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting ready to pray. Instead of my work, I would cut my page off. But now I got a girlfriend, I kept my page on. And when she called me, guess what I did? Guess what happened? Somebody said the devotion service was over. Y'all listen to what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. <laughs> that went on for a while. And God said, no more. Y'all need to pay attention to what I'm about to say. It went on for a while. I'm talking to the girl on the phone, completely kicking God to the curve. Guess what happened? Out the clear blue sky, the girl called me and broke up with me. This is the first girlfriend I ever had. She called me and broke up with me. And God reminded me of Exodus 20 and 3. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Anybody or anything, y'all got to listen to young people. I see you back there moving. Anybody, anything you put before God becomes your God. Did you hear what I said? You put the little girlfriend before God, guess what? That's your God. And guess what God said? He said, I'm a jealous God. And he's not going to have anybody before him. So the little girlfriend, the little boyfriend that you're kicking it with right now, you all happy, y'all kissing, y'all looking all pretty together, going to the movies, doing your thing. Guess what's going to happen? If you keep doing it, God's going to take his hands off of it. And the next thing, you're going to be crying. Baby, where you at? Where you at? She's going to leave you. God don't play. Do not play with God. So keep that in mind when you avoid church and reading your Bible and spending time with God to go to the game, to go hang out with your little girlfriend or your boyfriend or doing things that you put in before God. Somebody say God is jealous. Anybody jealous, raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. Be honest, be honest. I, don't, I, I need some hands up in the air. You're jealous. It's okay. Je God said he's jealous, but he deserved to be jealous. Amen. Exodus 20 and 5. It says he's a jealous God. Thou shalt have no other God before me. So keep putting him on the back burner. 
and see how that works out for you. Am I teaching okay so far? It's funny how we are two-faced. I ain't heard that word in about 30 years, too. You heard it? Somebody say, well, anybody know what two-faced means? I mean, you're with me right now. And then, next minute, you ain't with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. I remember back in the day, God did some things in my life where I was with God. And then, the, while, the, re, the, the time I'm with him, everything was working out fine. And I got into some situations. Anybody got into a situation? And you ask God, God, if you get me out of this thing, oh, I promise you, Lord, I promise you, I'll serve you to the day I die. Come on, I see some hands back there. And soon as you get out of that situation, you go back to doing the exact same thing that you were doing before. Somebody say, that's two-faced. I'm with God when he's on my side, when he's doing things for me. But guess what? After I get what I want from God, somebody said, that ain't right. After I get what I want from God, I kick him to the curve. Somebody said, be careful with that. God is not a prostitute. You can't pimp him and play him for a fool. Don't try to take advantage of the grace and mercy of God. The grace and mercy of God is precious. How would you feel if somebody smiled in your face and stabbed you in the back? Anybody ever had an experience like that? The enemy wants to distract us from the things of God. This is an important message because a lot of things are failing in your lives. Can I just talk to you a minute? A lot of things are not working out in your life. And it's not because you're not talented or you, have, you don't have the things necessary to be successful. You're being distracted. You're being distracted. The enemy even tried to distract Jesus, the son of the living God. Jesus had just been baptized by John the Baptist. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness immediately after his baptism. The purpose of this event was to test and prepare Jesus for his earthly ministry. During his time in the desert, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, which is often seen as a symbolic period of preparation and spiritual reflection. At the end of this period, the devil appeared to him and tempted him with three in three specific ways. Are you ready to find out how the devil came to Jesus? Are you ready to find out? The first temptation involved the devil suggesting that Jesus turn stones into bread to satisfy his hunger. He said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Look at how Jesus came back. Somebody say, Jesus is cool. Look how he came back. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Are y'all reading with me? Jesus said, don't come at me like that, partner. Don't come at me like that. I'm focused on the will of God. You know I'm hungry. I haven't had anything to eat in 40 days. And you tried to tempt me with food. How many of you have been distracted by food? Come on, let me say, I need every hand in the building to go up. You've been distracted by food. Somebody think about food. Say, I'll be glad when that preacher sit down because I can't wait to go home and get me something to eat. Am I talking okay? You're distracted. You can't even hear the message because your stomach is growling. Give him praise for that. You tried to go on a diet, but every commercial that came on TV had your favorite meal on the screen. Am I talking to anybody? It said, come and get me, come and get me. I mean, the commercial had barbecue ribs falling off the bones, collard greens and macaroni and cheese, followed up with a sweet potato pie and a chocolate cake with ice cream on top. Anybody, uh, hey man, know what I'm talking about? Somebody say distractions, distractions. Jesus let the devil know food does not have dominion over me. Anybody trying to lose weight, come on, raise your hand. I want you to say these words. Food 
does not have dominion over me. Hallelujah. Man needs more than food. He needs the word of God. Give the Lord a, play, a clap hand for that. Amen. Then Satan comes back with another distraction. Y'all ready for that one? The second temptation involved the devil taking Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem and suggesting that he throw himself down relying on God's protection. He said, if thou be the son of God, y'all read with me, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, listen, ain't Jesus cool? Jesus said to him, it is written again. <laughs> he gave him the word, it's written again. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Notice the devil uses scripture to tempt the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus hit him back with scriptures. Amen. Which means, watch this, you must be equipped with the word of God when distractions come your way. You remember what I told you earlier today? You need to read the Bible. The enemy is going to bring distractions, but if you're equipped with the word of God, you don't have to worry about it. That is your defense mechanism. The word of God. Have you ever been tempted to do something that you knew you had no business doing? And right when you were about to go through with it, a scripture or a word from God saying, don't do that. Anybody ever been through something? You're getting ready to do something. You know what it is. You know you was getting ready to do something that was out of the will of God. And you heard the voice of God or a scripture come and say, don't do that. Don't do that. You might have been in a conversation with your mate. You got upset with something they said, and you get ready to say something that to go off. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You're about to go off, and you heard the word of God say, don't say that. Don't say that. Heed the word of God because it can save you some heartaches. Amen. It pays to have a defense mechanism, the word of God, whenever you're faced with a challenging situation. Can I talk to my youth for a minute? Many of our youth are faced with peer pressure and temptations to use drugs, to sell drugs, join gangs, engage in premature sex, to drop out of school, and violence. These things are promoted by Satan according to John 10 and 10. The Bible says that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. But notice what Jesus says. He said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Give the Lord praise right now. So, my young people, let me tell you something. Don't get in these gangs. Don't get involved with stuff that's going to take you out. Give it to Jesus while you got a chance. Because it's a deception. Somebody says it's a deception. When you get caught up in these things, on the back end, somebody say on the back end. You're going to be crying, and you're going to wish you hadn't done the thing that you thought you should do. But the enemy is smiling whenever he sees you walking closer and closer to those things that are forbidden. Give him praise. The third temptation involved the devil offering Jesus all the kingdoms of the world if he would worship him. Notice what he said. Listen to what he said. Again, verse 8, y'all read him. Again, the devil taketh him into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him all these things will I give thee if thou would fall down and worship me y'all see that Jesus didn't play with him this time he simply said get thee hence Satan for it is written, gave him the word. Y'all see the three times when Satan came with the word, guess what Jesus did? He came back with the word. Some of y'all come back with, you, with your own intellect. No, come back with the word of God. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thy serve. Give him praise for that. Notice what happened next after Jesus refused to succumb to his distractions. Verse 11 says, 
Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Do y'all see that? When you ignore the distractions of Satan, he will eventually leave because he realized that you refuse to succumb to his distractions. Then guess what happens after that? Then angels come to minister to you because it's exhausting fighting the temptations of evil. In the back, we got tired. I mean, Satan was just beating you on you, beating on you, tempting you here and tempting you there. And you got tired. And you felt like giving in to the temptations. It's exhausting fighting against Satan. Hallelujah. But somebody say, Jesus will give you strength. Hallelujah. Everything you desire in life can be yours if you refuse to allow the distractions to get in your way. If you want to be successful in your career, anybody got a career that you, you trying so hard, you've been going here, you've been going there, trying to do everything to be successful in your career. Don't allow naysayers, haters, and distractors to talk you out of your dream. If you want to be a millionaire, any other millionaires in the building besides Gerald? Amen. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Any millionaires in the building? I see you back there. Any millionaires in the building? If you want to be a millionaire, don't get distracted or discouraged by your current financial status. We ain't got no money right now. I don't see no money coming. Don't get distracted by that. Keep your eyes on Jesus. If you want to finish school, don't allow relationships to uh, keep you from doing your study. Sometimes, can I talk to my young people uh, just again? Sometimes, when you're studying for a test, you're getting phone calls from your little boyfriend or your girlfriend. And you're staying up all night, then you end up failing the test. Don't allow those things to happen. I'm just giving you some, some practical information that can help you in your life. You want to finish school? Anybody going to school want to finish school? You can't let people and things distract you from what you're trying to do. I see my sister right there. She want to graduate. She want to graduate. Well, you got to hang up that phone. That boy calling you 5 o'clock in the morning. So I'm supposed to be I'm asleep right now. I got only a couple of hours. I'll be up in an hour. I got to go to school. I got a test today. Amen. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want to be healthy, don't let a chocolate cake keep you from your health goals. How many of you are trying to lose weight and you're trying to have a healthy life? Come on, raise your hand. You're trying to be healthy, but you're eating everything under the sun. You're drinking Kool-Aid. You ain't drinking water. You walk right by the water fountain. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Don't let these things distract you from your health. Sometimes our health diminishes because of the things that we put in our bodies. Can I just teach you a minute? We're eating the wrong things, y'all. Somebody say fruit and vegetables is what we need to be eating. Fruit and vegetables is some grain. That's our food, man. Every now and then, you probably grab you a little piece of chicken. Don't grab no pork chop with that lady. Amen. But you grab you something. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not telling you how you got to eat. I'm just telling you fruit and vegetables. Is what God gave them in the garden. And they lived a long time. You want to be healthy, do what you need to do, and don't be distracted by food and everything else that's turning you away from the will of God. If you want to be saved, don't let the devil keep you from connecting with Jesus Christ. That's the one. We're going to finish right there. If you want to be saved, don't let the devil distract you from the connection with Jesus Christ. I want you to raise your hand if this week you've been going through something and you know that the devil was trying you. Come on now. He was trying you. I mean, he was trying you. Distracting you from the things of God. But I'm so glad today that you're here in the house of God. Amen. You're here in the house of God. Come to church as often as you can. You really need to be, every time the doors open, you need to be in the church. 
I suggest you come to Love CFI, but if not here, go somewhere. Connect with God, man. Get the word of God. These scriptures, we just talked about how the devil came for Jesus. Y'all see that? If the devil will come for Jesus, the creator of the whole world, don't you think he's going to come for you? He's going to come for you. And if you are not in tune with God and you're distracted, he's going to get you. He's going to kill you. He's going to steal from you. And he's going to completely destroy you. But you as a Christian, you as a believer in Jesus, you don't have to be worried about that if you're connected with him. Somebody say, I'm connected to Jesus. I'm connected to Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Distractions. Distractions. If you are on social media, can I just talk a minute? I'm almost finished. If you on social media, two and three and four hours. Come on, raise your hand, young people. Tell the truth. You on, I see they raise their hand real quick. You on social media, just just swiping, just swiping, swiping. You understand what I'm saying? I found myself doing that, swiping and swiping. Just telling the truth, just swiping. But guess what? I missed out on time. I missed out on money. Things that's productive, guess what you do? You miss out. You're being distracted when you can be doing something productive. And right now, what I want our people to do, I don't want you to hear a sermon and just go out the door and be like, well, he preached okay today. He did a good job, whatever. No, I want you to make commitments today. If you're spending five hours on social media, I'm going to break it down to three. Anybody can commit to that right now. I see you. Praise God. Give him a hand for that. If you're spending two hours, can you break it down to one? Come on. Come on. Raise your hands in the, in the two, two hour social media people. Some folks, I ain't raising my hand because I know I'm going to commit to social media. I see you. I ain't going to call you today. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I ain't going to put you out there like that. Y'all follow me what I'm saying? But let me tell you something. Can I just talk? Anybody want some money? Come on now. We talked about being millionaires. The other day, we had people come to the, uh, to the altar. We had a lot of people to come to the altar because they needed some money, right? But a lot of your money going out your pocket because you're giving it to somebody who promoted something on social media. Instead of you putting something on social media and promoting your cakes, am I talking okay? Promoting your skills, your gifts, your talents, your vocal lessons, all the things that you can be getting paid from. You sitting there just swiping. Oh man, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. For cussing and fighting and stuff. Can I be honest? I saw somebody on there fighting, just fighting. They was in the grocery store just fighting. And the pastor just looking, just looking, looking, just looking at it. Being honest, I'm sitting there looking at it. And the whole while I'm looking, this don't even make no sense, but I'm still looking. Y'all follow me what I'm saying? I'm still looking at it, talking about how much it doesn't make any sense. When I could have been out doing something, you understand what I'm saying? But my young people, not just not my young people, a lot of our adults will own social media. Technology is good. How many know that technology is good? It's a good thing to have technology if you use it to your benefit. Use it to your benefit. You trying to accomplish something in life? Guess what? Don't be distracted by these things that's not putting in the money in your pocket, that's not helping your relationship, that's not doing anything to build your relationship with Jesus Christ. How many of you on social media looking at God stuff? Come on now. I don't see too many hands. You ain't looking, you ain't looking at God stuff. Y'all watching me on social media? <laughs> no, I ain't watching you, Pastor. I'm watching Beyonce. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm trying to give you a word that can get you paid like Beyonce. Are you following me what I'm saying? Beyonce got her money. She got her money. What you watching her for? Go get yours. Is this good teaching y'all? Tell me because I'm almost finished anyway. Is this good teaching y'all? Don't be distracted by the things of the world. Distractions. That's my message for the day. Distractions and everybody under the sound of my voice. 
have been guilty of being diverted from the things you need to do by distractions. But today, I need everybody on your feet who will make a commitment that the things that I'm doing that I know is not feeding me, is not bringing virtue to my life, is not giving me what I need to be a better person with Christ, is not putting the money in my pocket, is not feeding my family, is not doing anything positively for me. If you're going to commit with me on your feet right now and say, Lord, a lot of this time I'm giving to social media and to this other stuff, I'm going to give it to you. Come on, raise your hands if you're going to give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus right now. Be honest with it now. I'm going to give some of this time to you. And I, I, the reason I didn't say I'm going to give all the time to you because you will be lying. And I don't want to put you out there like that. Some of this time I'm giving to all this other stuff, things that are distracting me. I'm going to put it towards something that's going to be, help me to be productive in life. Come on, raise your hands. Amen. Give the Lord a praise for that. Amen. But the most important thing that you can ever do is give your life to Jesus Christ. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. Not tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promise. Give your life to Jesus today. Amen. If you're not saved and you know that you've been going through life, meandering through life, just kind of making your way through, trying to figure out how I'm going to get some money, how, trying to figure out how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to pay bills, how I'm going to do all this, and you're not focused on Jesus, I want you to come down to the altar right now. I want you to come down to the altar right now and say, Lord, I give my all to you. I give my heart to you right now. I can't do it on my own. I need you right now. Hallelujah. If you're not saved, if you die today, if you die today, I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. And you know without question that you will not go to heaven and be with Jesus Christ when he comes back if you know that for a fact if you know that in your heart I just want you to raise your hand just raise your hand I know I ain't going to heaven if, if I die today hallelujah I give God praise for everybody in the building amen give everybody a hand right now amen because that's crucial right there I want to know that when this life is over, I'll be with Jesus forever. Hallelujah. Can anybody say amen about that? I'm going to be with Jesus forever. The alternative is not something that you want. So I give God praise. If you're online, if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to repent of your sins right now. Tell Jesus you're sorry for your sins. And you commit your life to him right now. In the name of Jesus. Tell him thank you for dying on the cross. Tell him thank you for all the things that he's done in your life. And right now, tell him that you want to be committed to living for him. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Amen. If you would like to be a part of Love CFI, it's a place where love is overflowing. Where Jesus Christ is ever present to share his love with you. I want you to come down right now and be a part of the church. We're going to love you right where you are. If you want to be a part of this beautiful church, Come down right now. Hallelujah. I see him coming right now. Hallelujah. I see him coming. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Give me a hug, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me a hug, sister. Amen. Hallelujah. I give God praise right now. I give God praise. They want to come and be a part of this beautiful church. I'm so excited. Who invited my brother right here? Amen. Y'all come down with him. Come on now. Y'all come down with him and support him. Amen. This your brother? Hallelujah. Come over here. Get in the camera. Let everybody see you. I want everybody online to give him a hand clap of praise right now. Hallelujah. To come and be a part of the church. We want to love you, brother. We want to be there for you things you're going through. We want to talk to you. 
probably give you a few dollars if you need some or you can work for it. You like to work and give him praise for that. Amen. I give God praise. Come here, sister. This is my sister right here. Hallelujah. We give God praise for you. She's been coming to the church, and today she says she want to be a part of the church. I need everybody to shout right now. Y'all don't know how to shout. Y'all don't know when to shout. Well, I'm glad I've been saved a long time, because y'all don't know how to shout for me. I need some real shouters for me. Amen. She's been coming to the church. You've been hearing the word of God here? She said, yeah, yeah, I've been hearing the word of God. Been hearing the word of God, and she wants to be a part of the church. That's a beautiful thing. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful, brother. I'm like you, brother. Grateful, grateful. Somebody say, brother, Jerry, grateful, grateful, grateful. Listen, this is the most important thing you can do, giving your life to Jesus and getting in a church where they're teaching the Bible, somewhere you can learn the ways of Jesus Christ. That is more important than any man, any amount of money. I'm talking about trillions of dollars. People got a lot of money, but they don't have Jesus. The Bible says, what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? You don't want to lose your soul, do you? Amen. Give me I don't want to lose my soul. So I'm so grateful that they've come to be a part of this church. I need somebody to come down and retrieve them and celebrate them right now. Get the information. All right. Hallelujah. Go with Miss Cynthia right there. She gets your information. Y'all go with her real quick. Brother Gerald, you can take her information. Amen. Come on, shout to the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Hey, man, we're so grateful to God for what he's done in the place. I just want to encourage you and let you know that Jesus had to deal with the enemy. He had to deal with the enemy. Satan came with distractions and temptations to try to take Jesus out. So I want to let you know that he's going to come for you. The enemy is going to come for you. But if you're going to be ready, I want you to raise your hand. When the enemy come for you, Somebody say, come on. Somebody say, come on. When the enemy comes for you, I want you to be equipped. But don't say come on if you ain't equipped. Because see, the devil ain't nobody to be played with. See, this real stuff right now, he's going to come for you anyway. He's going to come for you. I'm telling you that. But if you're equipped with the word of God, give him praise, you're going to be all right. Amen. Come on, Mr. Gerald, and do the, our offering. Amen. Y'all had a good time in church today. Anybody get something from the word? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. It's offering time. Hallelujah. This is the time that we set aside in our church where you can be partakers in the word of God. This is the time when we just celebrate our giving. And God has been so good to us. And let us open our hearts, our minds. Let us open our pocketbooks as we give back to the Lord. Let's stand. Let us come around from the back on this side and around on this side. And let's give to the Lord.
for he's worthy worthy, worthy. worthy. is worthy. worthy for he is good, he is good. yes he, yes, he is. Hallelujah. hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord let's stand as we bless our offering god you are so good lord you are so good to us lord you blessed us above and beyond we can even imagine or believe oh god we thank you for our help oh god and our strength Oh, God, we thank you, God, for, oh, God, your goodness and your kindness, oh, God. And, God, we don't just thank you, God, for what you've done for us, but because of who you are, we give you the glory. And we praise your holy name, oh, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. Oh, God, most of all, for our salvation, that you saved us, that you wrote our name down in the book of life. Oh, God, you gave us that blessed assurance. Oh, God, we are truly grateful. Grateful, 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 grateful is born from our heart, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for an opportunity just to give back a portion, oh God, of how you have blessed us, Lord, that our treasures are not of this earth, but our treasures are in heaven, where dust and rust don't corrupt. God, we thank you, Lord, for giving. And God, we ask you to bless each giver. Bless those that didn't have to give, that they might be able to give in the next offering. And God, we thank you, we praise you, and we give you all the honor, all the glory, for it's in the matchless and wonderful name of Jesus that we pray, and amen. Hallelujah. Give him praise one more time. Let's give God praise for our new members right now. Amen. Y'all give it to him one more time. Hallelujah. Remember, our picnic is this coming Saturday at 1 o'clock, Perkinson Park. Bring a guest. Come, let's have a good time. Amen. We come to church. We have a good time. We want to go out to the park and have a wonderful time. There's going to be some food and just some good entertainment. Amen. So bring a friend and come out and enjoy. Let's look to the Lord and be dismissed. Lord, we thank you for what you've done in this place. We thank you for your word. We thank you for how you dealt with the enemy when he came to distract you, God. And you are the one that gives us the example of how we should deal with the enemy when it comes our way. So we thank you for that word today, oh God, and we pray that you will keep us and be a blessing to somebody throughout this week. We give you praise. Dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all come down and tell me you love me because I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. See you.